Hey, um, so it's been a while, uh, not the longest break I've taken, uh, by a long shot, but it has been longer than I wanted to take, um, and first things first, I want to thank Rebel of Empires for shouting me out, uh, like, over a week ago now, I think, and, and bringing with that shout out a bunch of new subscribers. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. I would have mentioned it in my last video, the one with the points about abortion, um, but I made that before, like I think the day before I noticed that shout out happened. And yeah, so it's just been there and and I've been like, I, I was gonna make a community post about it, but I'm like, I don't, I I couldn't figure that out. Apparently I'm like 71 when it comes to certain parts of computer use and website use because I, I don't know how to do that. Maybe that's a partner thing. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you is what I'm trying to say. Um, it was weird. It was like I, I became unexpectedly very self-conscious and I even like for like brief second I second guessed uploading the abortion points video because then I was like all in my head thinking oh I don't want to offend anyone which is so crazy and stupid because that's just like a part of being human is that we may disagree and it's just it's remnants of you know when I was a kid there I was a bit of a people pleaser so there's like remnants of that still in me like logic always overrides it so it's not a it's not a it's not a huge problem uh but yeah so, but it was this it was this weird it, it left me with this weird feeling of like intimidation and like oh no all these eyes are on me it's it's so it was so silly but yeah i'm i'm okay now and um yeah like i said it's it's a thing it's um it's it's inevitable that we'll disagree and um just hang in there cuz that that just happens with with content creators i watch that happens um yeah anyway so again thank you to rubble vampires uh and thank you for the new subscribers and yeah i just i've i've been busy life is busy and um and then when I have that free time, I just spend it unwinding, and sometimes unwinding involves arguing online. But yes, I I I could definitely utilize my free time better, um, and I'm working on that. It's a lifetime project. Um, but yeah, so um, the video that I wanted to discuss today. Uh, it, it's it's in the category of light work as in I, it wasn't filled it's like it's not terribly long and it's not filled with a million things I disagree with um, I even agreed with it in parts it's just that like the conclusions are wrong <laughs> the conclusions are wrong and it's like there's so many moments of almost getting it or getting it but like you know veering off into some other place with it, or like th it being unintentionally ironic, which we'll get to. But yeah, it almost works as a commentary about the trans movement and the TWAW ideology. It's it's wild, but yeah, there's a lack of self awareness there. But we'll get to that. Um, but so the person who made this video is. It's it's a it's from a content creator called Michael Henry, who I actually like. I'm subscribed to him. I think he's very funny. He's uh he makes content centering the gay male community, um, because he's a gay man, and it's um it's good. It's 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 very thought provoking and very funny. It's it's a unique kind of humor that I really like, and he's like very clever and silly and it's there's a, he makes a lot of great content and yeah he is I mean like most of the LGB community he is a 
believer of the TWAW ideology, um, or, or at least a pusher of it, you know, what they really truly believe in the, like, in the privacy of their minds, who knows, with anyone who's, who claims to be an ally, but he certainly pushes it, and um, it's unfortunate, but, you know, that's just very normal now, and uh, it's like I don't like to throw the baby away with the bathwater. That's such a sick way to say that. I don't like that saying, but how else can you say that? I don't like to throw someone away completely. That's what I'll say. It's more accurate, too. Um, no need to speak in metaphors, but, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes I guess I've had to, like, I, I guess I've done that with, like, Sean and Lindsay Ellis, um, not full. I mean, throwing them away in that, I, it, that just means I don't engage with their content. I don't, like, wish ill for them. I wish for them to wake up and be honest. That's what I wish. Um, but yeah, I, it's, ugh, it's hard because there are so many likable people who are, you know, TWAW ideologues. And I guess I just, I guess my rule is that until they do something unforgivable or they're just too aggressive with the misogyny, then I will still engage with them or, you know, consume their stuff. Uh, and Michael's, I guess he's pretty mild about it, so it's tolerable for now. I know some people think there's no level of this that should be tolerable, but... You know, it's weird because the TWAW allyship thing, it's, it's fun. It's like it comes in a way from a, like, good place, sort of. It's like this protective, caring, compassionate place. But then it's also, like, simultaneously, it necessitates r leaning into your misogynistic biases that most people have subconsciously where the compassion is very one-sided. It's primarily for males. I really think this movement's momentum would have been, like, halved, quartered, even, if somehow it was like, if there were no males in it, if, if it was like just a bunch of female people saying, I identify as a man. I, I, I suspect that. Um... Because, like, people don't listen to women. A bunch of women, girls saying, I don't want to be a girl. Like, they, girls and women have been saying that. And people are like, okay, all right, honey, okay, sugar tits, good luck with that. But then once men get in on it, it's like, oh, this is serious. Because, like, who would want to lower themselves to female status? Uh, yeah, so I, I do think that's part of it for a lot of people, especially lefty bros. I've talked about this where I think a lot of them are like just sexist and it's like they're the ones struggling to see a you know a gender non-conforming man as a man um and so they're like of course for them it's quite easy to like call a gender non-conforming man a, a woman um anyway so i was saying I, I i like michael henry i like his sense of humor i like his content for the most part um and so yeah, in this video, he's just like basically criticizing gender reveal parties, and again, I agreed with him at points, and his guest in it is someone called, I think, Aries? It comes, I think it's like, it comes from aristocracy, so maybe it's pronounced Aries. Um, I can't remember. I remember a while ago watching a video with this person, and... This person is a trans-identified male, very sweet-seeming, very, um, likable, honestly, and, and very conventionally pretty, which men can be, um, as John McLean and so many others show us, like, men can be pretty in the Barbie-like way, and that's the way that Ares or Ares is pretty, and, yeah, as a trans-identified male, and I, this is where it feels so mean, because I know um, they wouldn't want me, like, even acknowledging their maleness, right, but that's what they are, and, yeah, and I will even go as far as saying 
the fact that they are a, a gender non-conforming man and again a pretty one but that is what they are and that's not a bad thing and it's not anything to be ashamed of and you know easier said than done and that's we're gonna we're not gonna agree like that you know none of that makes it any less egregious I think to those people to to acknowledge them as a man even though that's what they are um but yeah so it is what it is you know so they're on the same side of being gender <laughs> gender uh reveal party critical <laughs> it's like I don't know that was just funny to me it, it was almost gender critical um yeah they almost get there I mean we'll get to that but then yeah okay um so I guess I'll just get into the video and uh yeah so that's when I explained to him that a glory hole is not social distancing Really? I think it depends on how big the dick is. Your head is all the oh. way up here and the dick comes out to over oh. here. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. So right off the bat, um, I probably should have put this in the intro, right? But, you know, just gonna do it live. Um, so vulgarity warning, I guess. Uh, although I think that part is the only vulgar part. Um, Michael can be fairly vulgar uh, in his videos, which, um, if that offends your sensibilities, sorry, but, yeah, again, I don't think he does, they, I don't think either of them do much more, oh, no, there's a little, there's a little, but it's mild, and I think, you know, we're all mostly adults here, I'm sure, and, um, to me, it's, uh, NBD, but, yeah, to you, I don't know, so, just, uh, warning, light heads up, light, light vulgarity, nothing too crazy. Uh, okay, let's continue. Hey! Hey, what are you folks up to? Just getting that vitamin D. It's the only D I'm getting these days. Ugh, same. That's sad. Yeah, I know. So where are you off to? I'm on my way to my sister's Zoom gender reveal party. Ugh. What's wrong with that? Honey. Honey. Honey! Honey. Queer people don't love those. The trans community especially. What's not to like? Hey, you should stop by later. I'll give you a gender reveal. Oh, that's so sweet. But that's not your gender. That's your sex. Gender's a social construct. I don't understand. I thought sex and gender were the same thing. No! Okay, so this is my first gripe with this video. Um, Michael and Eris are objectively wrong here because Gender and sex actually are the same, and what's in, I don't actually know his name, so I'll call him Tank Top. What's in, um, Tank Top's pants is actually perfectly valid to refer to as his sex or his gender. So, like, his euphemistic use of, of gender reveal to refer to, like, penis reveal, it was accurate like very inappropriate obviously um though it, it is a comedy video but yeah as inappropriate and pervy um as that was it was also inaccurate use of the word gender because gender may have additional meanings but sex and gender are still very much synonyms um they both are still defined as referring to maleness and femaleness like, usually the words are even used interchangeably. Maybe a bit less now, but reference to male and female is still officially part of gender's definition. It's just that, like, these days we've slid backwards when it comes to using the term gender. So, instead of, like, following the logical pro progression of like actually critiquing the version of of the use of the term gender that implicitly chains sex to sexist concepts and sexist stereotypes you've like now embraced the more sexist social uses of the term that reinforce sexist stereotypes 
it's crazy so yeah like tank tops use of gender was accurate um and you know what it was actually accurate in like every sense like even socially like even in alignment with the other definitions for gender because like looking male or female is part of gender expression even when like TRAs discuss it so this is the other problem with what Michael and Eris claim that I'm like just kind of realizing now like like it's really hypocritical and dishonest to communicate to people watching this video that penis can't be gender for actual males but then like TRAs totally support and affirm uh, trans identifying females who create like fake bulges in their pants to presumably express and communicate their gender as male when they're not even male. So like TRA support that like sort of appropriation of maleness and uh, trans identify females tying penis to gender but then they turn around and as this video communicates express that they don't support or agree with actual males tying their actual genitals to the word gender even though looking male is a form of gender expression. That's not consistent. That's not reasonable. That's not fair. Gender is the way that you perceive yourself or the way you want other people to perceive you. Boy, girl, are you somewhere in the mix? Okay, well, first of all, uh, then again, that would make Eris wrong to tell Tank Top that his penis isn't his gender. If you're saying that gender is how you see yourself as a boy or a girl, then penis is definitely part of seeing oneself as a man or a boy for male people. And secondly, Michael's definition of gender is, is, it's incoherent. He's saying like that gender and sex are different but then defining gender as how much or little you see yourself as one of two sexes because boy and girl are the names of sexes. So how does that concept of gender work exactly? Like what is it based on? Because I think that TRAs would, would, would then argue that boy and girl are genders, not sexes. But then, what are you even really saying? Like, that we shouldn't have human-specific names for the sexes in our species? Why not? And what exactly is the boy gender? Again, what is gender even? Because you still didn't really define it. Then I guess they would respond saying that gender is where you fall between boy and girl again and I would ask well what's a boy what's a girl then I guess they'd say well those are genders and perhaps you can see the problem here and the problem with circular definitions in general they're evasive they don't actually define anything they don't work as definitions. Like, Michael's definition of gender requires us to already have this, like, cultural understanding of boy stereotypes and girl stereotypes and to, like, silently agree with them and co-sign them to work. And this this brings me to my primary issue with trans ideology which is that no believer in it will admit its inherent sexism and the harm that comes from that as a foundation it's it's essentially sexism turned into a religion and belief system like a belief system that man and woman are spirits 
or energies or essences as King Critical calls them. Trans and gender ideology rely on unaddressed and unspoken and un unpacked sexism to function. Like it's 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 all implied and coded in their attire. That's why whenever they get cornered into defining woman, they're forced to reveal this basically. They know. They're they're saying that a disinterest in like a certain maybe more Kardashian esque, Beyonce like, Taylor Swift adjacent expression style on woman's you even if you're female they communicate this all the time without explicitly saying it although sometimes they do go full mask off and just say it like the other day i was in a a clubhouse room and this trans identified male like after being badgered with this question of what is a woman he finally said that he grew up in the south so to him a woman is like someone who kept a clean house and was kind and hospitable and always knows her way around the kitchen and and like knew how to get what she wanted from men but like remained soft-spoken and he was so condescending when a bunch of women in the room tried to explain to him what was wrong with what he said. So, all of that to say, Michael got it wrong here. And this is a very harmful concept of gender to adhere to and to push and promote. Like, the sexist idea of gender should be thrown in the, in the garbage, in the trash. It's like... It's obviously bad, but now the left promotes it and treats it like it's sacred in a way I don't, I feel like they don't treat anything else in life. This is so, they're so serious about trans ideology. It's, it's crazy. Um, and it's harmful. X refers to the biological and chromosomal differences between males and females. Gender is something that somebody defines for themselves, not something you could tell from a picture of genitals on an ultrasound. Wait, what? Michael, if you can define it for yourself, then that means Tank Top can define his gender with his genitals. Anyone can. Right? That, like, if you can define it for yourself, then you can define it by your body parts. And also, gender is a synonym for sex. So, when you have a gender reveal in a hospital or as a party, you are having a sex reveal. They are the same. It is valid to use gender when you mean sex. Still, referencing maleness and femaleness is still included in its official definition. So Eris was right about that definition of sex, but Michael is wrong about that definition of gender or treating it like it's the only definition. Not something you can tell from a picture of genitals on an ultrasound. But you can. Michael, you can. You can tell gender from a picture of genitals on an ultrasound. Yes, you can. Because gender is also a synonym for sex. It still is. It's still officially, um, it's still defined with reference to maleness and femaleness. So that is still one of its valid definitions. You can't take that away from people yet. I mean, that's the thing about definitions. You really can't create them in a vacuum, and you can't, you can't define words personally because you share this language with everyone. So if you say a woman is G, R, and F, then that is making a comment about this word we use together in this, in this culture and in this, for people who speak this language 
and and it's a word used in legislation so it it needs to have a concrete definition like there's practical need for that there sexism still very much exists the remnants of female oppression are still all around us so this acting like we don't need to ever talk about women specifically or even men specifically in certain scenarios is is I what what universe are you living in? Okay, but what does that have to do with trans people? I mean, if you're throwing a party that's all about gender identity and reinforcing outdated and problematic gender norms. Like girls do this thing and boys do that thing. Queer people are going to have something to say about it. Okay. So this fucking part. Um wow. Like okay. So queer people have something to say about gender norms? Say for, like, the minority of gender-critical queer people, anything that they say about gender norms other than, I love them, they're rad, gender norms literally anchor my identity, it is a big fat pack of lies. Okay, seriously though, I agree with this critique and where it's heading, but isn't the idea that you're critiquing about gender reveal parties pushing that girls do this thing and boys do this other thing. The very foundation of trans ideology. Like, Michael, you just said that gender is how much of a boy or girl you see yourself as and want society to see you as. So, if that's how you prefer to think about gender, wouldn't that necessitate holding beliefs about Boys being the category that do this thing, and girls being the category that do that other thing. Since a key component of trans ideology and gender as you define it is not rooting boyness or girlness in anything biological, and really gender reveal parties are really just that. They're parties meant to um, celebrate learning the sex of a baby, I mean, theoretically, because we, we all know that everyone doesn't necessarily celebrate, especially when it's a girl. Hmm, yes, sex is important because the uh, disappointment and discrimination against uh, female people starts before they're even born. So, you know, we need a name. We need to be able to talk about that. Um, yeah, so... So theoretically, that's what a gender reveal party is supposed to be, a celebration of learning the sex of a baby, because they do inherently come with different things. You know, males and females are the same when they're the same species, but they're also different. Both are true. You know, a man and a woman, they're the same and they're different at the same time. But... <gasps> But people are sexist because society is sexist um, or the other way around, I guess either or. So like call it a gender reveal party, a sex reveal party, or I think what you're going to say later, uh, a genital release party. Um, it doesn't matter because sex biases and prejudices and sex-based social expectations still exist, whatever you call the party or the sexes. Like, changing the name doesn't change that. The problem of stereotyping people with vaginas and people with penises doesn't disappear when you limit language or remove language altogether to refer to those types of people. And this really highlights how gender and sex are synonyms, because, like, gender stereotypes are sex stereotypes. And if we're really honest, the trans-accommodating concept of gender that you described earlier not only doesn't change outdated and problematic gender norms, but it very strongly reinforces them. Look at Eris. Look at you. You share a sex, but go by different costumes, then seem to ask for different gender labels based on that. 
It's literally adherence to the girls do this and boys do this kind of thing that you just chided earlier. But worse, actually, because doing can be rooted in something non-sexist and factual. Like, like it actually is accurate to, to say something like, boys do this sperm production thing and girls do this monthly egg release thing. That's not um, a bad thing to tie to uh, the baby you're about to have. But then there are people like you and Eris, and you're doing more of a people who wish to be called girls do this thing, and people who wish to be called boys do this other thing. And that is worse. That is, like, actually bad and problematic. So I don't, I don't really know how you reconcile these conflicting stances. Like when the themes of these parties are bird outs or bows, wheels or heels, tutus or trucks, ruffles or rifles. <laughs> Don't ask, it was a Facebook friends. Well, yes, this I agree with. These themes are sexist and they do push harmful stereotypes on kids before they have a chance to decide for themselves. And you know, in an ideal society and situation, you know, there would not be those themes, but, you know, to be fair, I don't think every gender reveal party does, like, um, much, like, like a, like a stuff theme, like, there is always, or usually a color theme, where, you know, pink and blue, which is not in itself bad, you know, just picking a random color, uh, for each sex, although it is kind of bad, because then it creates a whole complex where boys are, like, they have this aversion to pink and it's completely social and it, but it feels like almost natural which is crazy how pink feels like a girl color when it's just a, a, a natural phenomenon as colors are and so truly has no inherent you know sex tied to it right but uh it's, it's like a hairy woman's leg or a, a, a I said that right. It's like a the hairy leg of a woman. It it almost feels because you see it so infrequently, and you you're we're conditioned in such a way that a woman with a hairy leg it feels unnatural, even though it's the opposite. It's natural, just like a a guy in pink. It feels so wrong, um, like in, in I don't know. If, is this instinctual? Kind of, like there's this social instinct that I think is is valid to call an instinct and I've like there's this I don't know like saying where it's like your first thought is society's fault your second thought is your fault or something like that and I think that's very true because if you're conditioned to think a certain way to you know raised with certain uh rules um for your culture yeah you're you're it's it humans that's how we're wired we are receptive to conditioning very very receptive to it it works it it changes how we view what is natural and so that's how uh pink can f feel so weird uh for boys and 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 you know hair he likes can seem so weird on girls even though neither of those things inherently should so yeah i agree with this this is maybe where i agreed the most but the thing here is that trans ideology, again, it, it pushes this belief. It, it affirms this idea. It affirms the idea of girls being a, a type who are drawn to things, not a type with, with a certain biology, but instead the thing that makes you a girl in, you know, under trans ideology is um, a mindset. And that would suggest it is things like preferring ruffles over rifles or, or what else did they say? Um, uh, tutus over trucks and, and, you know, and same with boys where, you know, preferring trucks is what makes you a boy. So this, this thing where you're arguing against 
gender stereotypes slash sex stereotypes but then like you're part of a an ideology that absolutely embraces them and is like defined by them in a sense i don't see how trans identified people are determining their level of boyness or girlness without relying on those ruffles versus rifles interests and stereotypes and pink versus blue interests or or, or attraction or um, any of the stereotypes, makeup versus bare face, uh, loose clothes versus tight clothes, uh, wanting to wear blacks and blues and, and browns and greens versus wanting to wear pink and sparkles and purples and colors. I, I, I don't, I, how else, how else are you determining your, your gender? your boyness, your girlness. I'm using Michael's uh, definition of it, if not stuff like this. And we've all seen, so we've all seen those how I knew I was trans videos or talked to trans identifying people who, who have discussed and described how they knew. And it is rooted in stuff like this. It is like the, the, the envy people who always seem female although I, I'm aware of, of some who aren't, but, um, so not always, but uh, they mostly, um, but they, they always say, like, they felt this disconnect to girlness, and it was a disconnect to the stereotypes, it was a disconnect to the, like, I keep going back to this, the ruffles, to the, to the dresses, to the wanting to express that way, even though that should not be what determines you being a girl or a boy that's the sexism that we're we should be trying to eradicate not leaning into like trans ideology does and then this is like almost insulting or gaslighting or something to like to be to have that be so intertwined in in how trans identifying people see themselves and express themselves and how they even determine themselves and then like turning like doing all that then then turning around and going we hate stereotypes like that's not honest i mean it could actually be but you're then you know someone who is you know dysphoric or or empathetic to dysphoric people and an ally in that way even in michael's way if you're realizing that this is harmful if you can acknowledge stereotypes are harmful how do you not also see how these stereotypes are bolstered and and propped up in the trans identifying community how do you not see the connection in how they identify and the the stereotypes and how how this is part of the harm how this disconnect from the stereotype that they're assigned and then I that I will use in in this case I will use the word assigned how the how that stereotype that they're assigned based on their genitals based on their sex based on their gender is is the cause of their dysphoria is part of why they feel so disconnected from the word boy which is just a word for male children who are human and or girl which is a sound for female children who are human and this should be it should be that simple and instead of trying to show trans identifying people this you say you're like affirming them leaning into these stereotypes that you are right now criticizing and it's so, it's such a contradiction. Okay, well, anyway, you see how the themes of these parties perpetuate what's expected for a boy to be doing or a girl to be doing? When they have stuff assignment themes and even color assignment themes, they are doing that. I agree. But don't you see how you are also doing that? Eris is doing that. When your reason for wanting to be called a woman is because that is how you prefer to look, 
you are communicating that this this look is that of a woman that this is what women do this being your garb your face your hair it's it's doing that too so you are doing the same thing that the more problematic version of those gender reveal parties do and Michael is co-signing it all TRAs are you are both communicating something in this video Eris is communicating that that look is woman's stuff Michael is communicating that that look is man's stuff you are especially communicating that because of the subject of the video you are making and I know you will always deny this TRAs and trans identifying people will always deny this part and say no it's something internal but first of all that doesn't make you the thing feeling a way doesn't make you the thing feeling a feeling doesn't make you a thing there are parameters requirements criteria to be a thing to be anything and and if you don't fit the criteria you are not the thing learning to deal with that to cope with that is what dysphoric people should be doing and two it's not honest when you say that like I pay attention to actions not words because everyone's a bullshitter like look at you two look at Eris you like looking like this and then saying I hate stereotypes what come on and that's like most of the community most of the ones there's always some little flare that is indicative supposed to be indicative of their gender it even if they don't pass it's there's always that thing that's part of it and that is part of it when you when trans identified males do the red lipstick when when NB identifying females do the short haircut you are constantly communicating something that contradicts what is coming out of your mouth because obviously it sounds too bad to say we believe in upholding the stereotypes we are rooted in them they are rooted in us we have taken them to their extreme yeah that sounds bad I wanted to add this clarification in case it wasn't clear because I, I was listening back and I don't know that it is but Eris looking this way is not the problem at all like this is fine if this is how Eris wants to express the issue is looking this way and then as a male saying I am a woman because those two are linked you like they'll pretend they're not linked trans identified people constantly pretend the look doesn't is not linked to what you're calling yourself but it is and that's the problem that a male person can't stand in his maleness and I'm you know own being a man who prefers to look like this and instead does this you know type of expression and then calls themselves a woman that's the bad part so if a child or adult wants to not follow these societally constructed gender norms, they can face ridicule. Or shame or embarrassment for not being able to live up to their parents or society's expectations. I agree with this. I agree with what they've said here. I would just add that I don't think gender reveals are always this. Though I do think even without gender reveal, or I should say gender reveal parties, this would exist though I guess the critique could be like you know a gender reveal party like only adds to it and it's you know I guess tied to these expectations again I don't think that's always the case but that is often the case but that's often the case because that's just how again as I said before people are sexist that's just how people are that's how our society is um, it ha it's just filled with sexist, you know, expectations and stereotypes, not altogether unfounded, but 
the badness is the pushing them and forcing them on kids you know letting kids choose is is not opted for as often as um, framing kids and teaching kids how to be proper girls and proper boys and shaming the traits in them that come naturally that defy that so valid critique for the most part but then also you're leaving out how one of the results one of the negative results of this this type of thinking this pushing of stereotypes on kids and and like demanding it and you know part because you like you listed like kids growing up shamed for not fitting perfectly in the boy mold or whatever or girl mold as one of the negatives that come from this sort of tradition or thinking the thinking tied to it but you didn't list of course you wouldn't but one of the things is trans ideology that's the thing one of the results of this I think is heiress is is feeling like you can't look like that and call yourself a man that's one of the the harmful side effects of intense sexism in a society for all those who don't want to be that or don't feel connected to the stereotypes feel disconnected from their label from their category even though it it should just be again rooted um in their biology in something real in something tangible but instead it's tied to all of this social expectation from people who go under that who fall under that label and like the gender crits are saying that's bad let's stop that and you're saying no the people who fall under the woman label should um or people who don't feel uh comfortable with male stereotypes or yeah with male stereotypes should put themselves in a different label should put themselves in the woman or non-binary label and that's bad that's adding to the problem and I keep repeating myself I feel like but that's the issue you are adding to this problem while you think you're critiquing it I think that's called cognitive dissonance it's it's crazy to not realize that as you go over these issues as he wrote these lines to not notice this part of it too that this you know Eris and every trans identified person is connected to this issue because of them existing as an extreme result of it that's the part you're leaving out perhaps unknowingly I think you're overthinking this it's just a party to celebrate and maybe get some gifts I do think that that's what it should be and I think for a lot of people that's what it is it's not necessarily bad either to celebrate the uniqueness of having a boy and the uniqueness of having a girl there are people who are sane and decent and you know their sexist biases aside because like everyone has those they they do they are happy to have a girl they are happy to have a boy but yeah uh it it is tied to some specific expectations outside of biology and that part is not good but if you do do it the way he described it could be good it could be fine i'm just giving you my take on how this little party to celebrate maybe get some gifts could mushroom into problems later on like a father telling their son that they're weird for wanting to have their nails painted or a kid telling a girl that she eats like a man or a coach telling their player to grow a pair or a wife telling her husband that that's a girl's drink or a man feeling so socially alienated from being a man and male stereotypes that he opts to consider himself a woman instead heiress so yeah like I agree but most of those things and sexism in general existed before gender reveal parties were even possible 
but I get how you could argue that gender reveal parties have the potential to fuel that because they, they definitely do. Or a woman being beaten or killed because maybe she doesn't behave like or look like the way someone was taught a woman should be behaving like or looking like. So to them, that person is confusing or wrong. And a lot of those people are queer. Trans people of color are especially vulnerable. I truly believe that the type of crime that Michael was alluding to here is rooted in homophobia. I think if we somehow magically eradicated homophobia, we would not experience that type of crime, you know, harming someone who is male, who is gender nonconforming because they are gender nonconforming. And maybe, okay, and then I, I, I can, I've actually made this argument before online, in a, you know, like on Instagram, but there is misogyny in this too, but not in the way you think. Not, it's not trans misogyny. It's misogyny, just old-fashioned misogyny where things that women do, things that are associated with women, are considered the inferior form of existence of, like, because women are considered, by many all around the world, the inferior form of existence. So the things they're into, the things pushed on them, and that they're maybe more naturally inclined to be into, are looked down on by many in the world. So men wanting to partake in those things are, like, viewed as really lowly men for, like, wanting to do something that is beneath their station as men. And that is part of why men even get gay bashed because you're like doing the thing that is, you know, it's, it's above your, I don't know, dignity to like, to like take penis from a man. Like that's a degrading act that women are designed for, not you. So, so it's homophobia and misogyny, but again, not misogyny in the way that you think. But yeah, and of course it's terrible and um, evil and you know, hurting someone because you are, you, I don't know, you have, honestly, there's some unresolved issues in you, um, the harmer, the, the physically violent harmer who, who is hurting this person because you are insecure and you don't want to be seen as gay or, um, and then doing that thing that, uh, not to get too far into the weeds, but I think a lot of men partly because religion are socialized to like put the onus on the victim, put the onus on the object of their lust. So blame women, blame a beautiful trans-identified male who they're attracted to. So part of it is an accountability thing and, and, uh, and a true homophobia. Emphasis on the phobia. Being scared to be perceived as gay is even part of it, which again is interestingly connected, I believe, to being anything like a woman, like resembling a woman in any way is like a lower state of being. Then like mixing that with a guy who's unstable, violent, violent prone, uh, doesn't know how to handle his feelings, yeah, it's it's very it's a very bad mix. So even though the people who are throwing these parties have good intentions and just want to blow blue or pink dust out of their tailpipes, they're unknowingly adding fuel to the flames of society's idea of what a man or a woman should or shouldn't be. This is potentially true, but so are you, Eris. You are the product and perpetuator of this sexist mechanism in society you're fueling this too just like those gender reveal parties have the potential to also possibly unknowingly all because the tiniest seed was planted into people's brains at day one as to what's expected for a boy or a girl to look like talk like or behave like it's weird how he says that gender reveal parties can plant a seed that informs what we think a woman is supposed to behave like and, and sound like, etc. 
as he sits next to a male person who is doing that very thing by being a male person and saying without saying what a woman is supposed to um, look like and sound like, well, as much as they can help what they sound like, um, as they call themselves a woman, not based on biology, but on something unspoken. So, you know, saying without saying, this is what a woman is. And Michael is criticizing that, but not really, not in a meaningful or helpful way. Not when you don't contend with how Eris is a product of that and is perpetuating that. And the other thing is... It seems like the obvious solution to that or the path towards a solution to that would be teaching children that all a boy is is a male person who is a child, all a girl is is a female person who is a child, and then after that they can be anything they want. They can express however, they can look however, they can be shy as ever, they can be boisterous and and loud as ever, and their sex doesn't matter really at all beyond what they need to what they need to do with it biologically but everything else is a choice and they're free to express you know however they feel like expressing that seems like the obvious solution or again path towards a solution not heiress not telling kids that gender is a feeling and a feeling of how much of a boy you are and how much of a girl you are. I would like to know what he, well, how he defines boy and girl. That would be interesting to know. I'm guessing he doesn't, though, which renders those words meaningless and pointless unless, of course, we all have a wink-wink, nudge-nudge understanding of what they are that we're just not supposed to say or acknowledge directly. Wow, it's a lot to take in. God, I miss saying that. Oh, oh. Well, you were warned about the vulgarity, so yeah. So should I not go to my sister's gender genital release party? Aha, there's that joke. I knew I got it from somewhere, but I wasn't quite sure if it was this video or one of his others. The only point I would make is, again, the name of the type of party doesn't really matter, and, you know, having the party doesn't matter as much as the way the sexes are perceived, and, you know, again, trans ideology is not helping, it's hurting, and making girls and boys feel even more like they cannot call themselves girls and boys because of how disconnected they are from the stereotypes, which is bad because connection to the stereotypes should not be what we base our gender identity on. Gender identity should refer to your sex. That's it. Make it simple. Make it real. Make it concrete. And concepts of gender outside of biology should be heavily scrutinized and then ultimately thrown in the trash. We don't need that. It's not doing us any favors. The freedom is in gender equating to sex, and that's it. Then everyone gets to be whatever kind of individual they want after that. So these gender reveal parties, or gender release parties, whatever you want to call them, they're like the least of our worries as a society. Well, you can do whatever you want to do. I probably wouldn't go. Me neither. Good. I hate my sister anyway. She owes me 10 grand. Thanks. See you later. And of course, they have to vilify the only woman mentioned in this sketch. Just kidding. I think. Bye. Bye. 
so what's his story? God, he just got released from a mental institution. Okay, so that was funny. Um, probably uh, the funniest part of this particular video. Yeah, so it's over. I mean, there's a little bit more, but it's just outro humor. No more points. So I guess that concludes this video. Um, funny in teeny, teeny, tiny parts. The whole bulk of the middle was uh, very frustrating because um, Michael Henry has asked some very interesting questions, things that I've thought about. Like he's questioned the whole norm in the gay community of, of men calling each other girl. And I, I like that thoughtfulness. And I wonder about it too, how good that is, what it implies and stuff. And then there's this. But again, as I said in the beginning, I understand most of the LGB community has to be very pro-teep to the point of almost excluding themselves and centering T. And um, it's not just that. Like, even if this were a different um, letter, I guess, it would be a bit odd. But it's extra bad to me because the T is so problematic so problematic such a backwards ideology um yeah it's very unfortunate but he's funny otherwise and yeah okay thank you for watching um thank you again to the new subscribers and thank you again to rubble of empires and yeah see you in the next video sorry these come out so far apart from each other by the way I'm yeah I'm not great at that but trying to get better okay thank you bye